Hola amigos and chicas, welcome to La Fena Sosa Bike Park here in Spain. Now let's have a little think about going fast. Free speed is free speed, right? If you can do something to get you going fast that isn't going to cost you the earth, well then surely it's well worth doing. And you're in luck because today's video is all about things you can be doing to get you going faster out on the trail. Okay, before we dive into the video people, why not show the channel a little bit of love by clicking the old subscribe button, giving us a thumbs up, and then at the end, tell me if I've missed anything. Is there anything else you reckon you could do out there to get you some free speed? So, let's talk free speed. First up, it's bike kind of maintenance, if you like. Now, if things on your bike are rubbing and grinding away, it ain't gonna help you go no faster, people. No, things like disc brakes rubbing. That is resistance, the so same with the bearings in your hubs. If they're very notchy and grindy, they might need re-greasing if that's the case, or possibly replacing. All of these simple little things can really add up and just make for a smoother, faster ride out on the trail. Just give them a check, it's quite simple. Hang on, listen. Oh, sounds good, I know that. And doesn't seem to be much resistance. If you can hear some noises, you know there's rubbing. Oh, she spins and spins, there is no Resistance in that, listen. Come on! A smooth bike is a fast bike then, as we touched on in the first segment, but a properly set up bike, well, that is also a fast bike too. So what can you do to your bike to make it faster out on the trail? Being comfortable on the bike then, well, it means more confidence and in turn, more speed. So if you do get this thing dialed, hey Presto, you are gonna be going faster. So let's start at the front. So we've got suspension, it's a huge part of your bike. If you're running front suspension and it's an air suspension unit, then having the right pressures in there, playing around with the volume tokens and adjusting it with the rebound and compression all for your weight and riding style will make a huge difference. As will obviously the tires, getting the right tires for the type of riding that you do is absolutely crucial. There's no point having like these massive downhill tires on if you're an XC racer. It's only gonna make your life a little bit harder. Moving up, cockpit setup. So things like stem length, stack height, bar roll, and uh, lever position. And that goes for all the levers, not just the brakes. So we're thinking of shifter, dropper, brake levers. You've really gotta have a good play around and get them in exactly the position you want. But what about the middle of the bike? So the middle of the bike then, well, we've got obviously the rear suspension unit. So again, if it's an air unit, getting the right pressure in there, tokens, rebound compression, again, much like the front, absolutely spot on, is really important. Just take the time, do lots of runs of the same track until the bike feels really comfortable. Seat post and seat height, seat position, again, crucial to being really comfortable. So if you've got a big dropper like this, you wanna make sure it's at the right position when it's at its fully most extended. And then again with the saddle, so tilt uh, and where it sits on the rails. Further down, well, you do have things like the front chain ring, which you can adjust uh, in terms of changing what size it is to get your gearing ratios correct. What about over to the back? Well, at the back end of the bike, it's a slightly more straightforward affair because we don't have any suspension units or things like that. There's slightly less adjustability going on. But if you are new to riding, it might be sort of getting the right gears and the types of gears that you want. So. One by 12 is running on this, and we have a big wide, ra wide ratio set, sorry, which means I can winch myself up and down any kind of hill, getting those gears running nice and smooth as well. And again, tire choice. I didn't talk about pressure at the front because I'm gonna talk about it right now. So once you've got the right tire for the right application, well then it's getting that tire uh, pressure dialed and maybe running an insert in there. So these are big 2.6 enduro case and tires because I'm smashing these rocky trails and I need all the puncture protection and assistance I get. And I'm running a tire pressure that I normally do. And all of these things dotted all over the bike are really gonna add up to making you feel very, very comfortable on it. And hopefully, rapid as you like. Sectioning, practicing something, it's something we should all be doing, regardless of the type of feature or our skill set, shall we say, or our skill level. Just simply practicing and sessioning can really make us much better riders. So I've come to this section here. It's a fairly innocuous looking section. There's two rollers here, there's two rollers there. So for some of us, just manualing through these two rollers could be quite tricky. 
So just practicing that over and over again to really dial it in and get the technique and skill sorted is something that you can do in a fairly safe environment. If you're a more advanced rider, well, you could look at spicing this up. So I maybe come in, I might double up the first one, manual the second, or I might manual the first, double the second. I might go for the mega manual and get through the whole lot. I'm gonna have a little mess around because that is the way you do get better and getting better is getting faster. Right, that was the manual manual done. Let's now go for the mega manual and get that done. See you in a mo. Even if I don't do it first attempt, well, that's what practicing's for. Watch this, bit of speed. Oh, he's tripled. We got the triple manual, but not the quad, which means I'm gonna go again. Hey! Squeaked her over. Whoa, right, this is a particularly wild looking section. I had to get hard on the brakes to not drop in straight away without looking, which brings me nicely to braking. So knowing where, when, and how to brake, and just how much exactly, is great for not losing any more speed than you potentially need to. So let's have a quick look at this section and see how we go about that. So when it comes to braking on any segment or turn, shall we say that the majority of your braking wants to be done beforehand, so you don't lose any speed through the section. This is a definitely most apparent when it comes to turns. You want to be braking beforehand the right amount so that you carry the nice amount of speed all the way through. When it comes to a really rough section like this, well, we're diving in. Come with me, cameraman. So I'm going to try and brake beforehand to scrub the speed that I want to carry through it, but I shall also obviously be covering the brakes all the way through because you can see there's a big tight left-hander at the end. So I'll be Nice and even on the brakes here. Definitely not too uh, strong on the front brake because <laughs> this is really loose. I don't want to lock up the front wheel on this loose gravel and then it'll be let the brakes off into the turn. Practicing a few times like I've done in the past segment on certain sections like this will get you used to just brake modulation, how they feel, when and where to brake. So let's hit the section. All right, I know we're coming in steady, but I'm going to be look. Weight back, smooth on the brakes, pick my line, let go of the brakes and I'm off, see ya. So if I told you slowing down will make you faster, you'd think I was an absolute madman, right? You'd think, Rich, you're mental and well, you might be 100% correct, but it is true. Whew. Something I've learned the hard way over life XC racing, these massive epic rides that I do, is that actually pacing yourself, so managing your speed will make you faster in the long run. Think of it this way, if you set off on your ride or off the start line at 110%, giving it the beans flat out, right, you might be winning, you might be leading, but it's not sustainable, not for most of us anyway. No, dial it back, get to that sort of 90, 95% mark, and you'll be able to go for faster for longer. So the guys and girls that you see sprint off, going off this way, you're like, flipping heck, why are they going so flat out? Well, don't worry, it's tortoise in the hair, my friends. Yep, what will happen is that unless they are some sort of Nino Scherter-esque monsters in the legs department there, they're more than likely gonna blow up or really suffer if you're out with your friends, say, when it comes to the latter half of the ride. Whereas you, you'll be fresh as a daisy. Those legs will still be spinning absolutely no problem at all because you actually learn to pace yourself and rein it in a little bit at the beginning of the ride, not diving into all those energies, sort of reserves, if you like, straight away. You've got a little bit of backup to get you to the end. You've practiced and you've practiced. You've sessioned and you've sessioned. You can't quite get it right. Well, this next one's an absolute beaut for getting you faster. And it is coaching days. Yep, using the knowledge of a more experienced rider to help you dial in. Maybe learning a new skill, brushing up on some old skills, or maybe doing a current skill in the right technique. Using that person's information that they already have can really help you get quicker. So most trail centers will actually offer coaching. So maybe just heading down to your local one and inquiring at the desk or something like that can 
be the first step to getting there. If where you ride or in your local area potentially doesn't have that, then it doesn't take too much hunting around on the internet to find a qualified coach or a local pro who's offering their services to teach you and get you better, faster, and enjoying the trails even more. So coaching is really good for you. Obviously sessioning and practicing and getting your bike dialed in is really good for you. But what if you're feeling a little bit unfit? What if you're, what if you think it's holding you back? Well, this is my next one. A bit of training can go a long way. So just maybe setting a bit of time aside to put some proper structured rides together. Maybe it might be some sprint work, just a little bit of time down the gym, going out for a road ride if you can, or even just a run. You don't have to spend money on a gym membership or a turbo trainer or anything like that. If you can't afford it, it doesn't matter. You can still do plenty of different things to help you potentially shed a little weight, get a little lighter so you can zip up them hills a bit quicker, or just improve your overall fitness. You'll notice once you start getting a bit fitter, a bit stronger and healthier out on the trails, your riding will vastly improve very, very quickly. It's well worth it. There we go then, some great things you could be doing to hopefully help you guys and girls get faster out on the trails. I tell you what, let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of them and hopefully they've worked for you because fingers crossed they do. But from me for now, thank you for watching. I'm out of it, but I will catch you next time. So from La Fena Sosa, au revoir.